this morning. I want to invite you to please join us in the atrium for coffee and treats after worship this morning. And then we'll have Sunday school and confirmation classes that begin at 9.45 a.m. And at 10 a.m., our adult, <clears throat> excuse me, our adult education, education class meets in the fireside room. We'll conclude our two-part series, All Are Welcome, What Does This Mean? Acts 2.12. I also want to remind you to please consider making donation for our trip to the ELCA Youth Gathering this summer. There are envelopes and a drop box in the atrium area. You can see it right before you go into the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the East Church doors there, sanctuary doors. So I hope you will uh, take a look at that and be willing to do some of that sponsorship. It means so much. I know what these trips are like, having been on them when I was a youth and also having been in charge of them as uh, a pastor as well, so we thank you in advance for your support. <clears throat> At this time, there he is, Don, we'll go ahead and have you come up then. I spoke for the coffee hour about a mental health benefit Marsha and I were hosting at the uh, DFW and uh, on behalf of Marsha and me I'd like to just thank the congregation for your support in kind and in your hearts we had uh, it really humbled us it was beyond our expectations um, we raised fifteen thousand dollars we had a band I think at any point in time there were 200 250 people there uh, and there was some bar hopping as we used to call it back in the old days where people are going from the VFW club where there's a fundraiser for a hockey player. There was a pay it forward out to the hot end. So it was a busy night, but people found their way down to the um, center and a number of people contributed signed auction items, which were very popular. And we're gonna donate that money to a number of causes. One is uh, the Power of Pink, Boys of Tomorrow and Peer Power partners at the Arthur Public Schools, uh, the VFW Veterans Fund for uh, veterans who are having uh, a tough time after uh, combat, the bridge which helps um, uh, challenged individuals in town, and then Nexus Gerard Family Healing. So that will be coming up in the next few weeks and uh, I just want to thank everybody for their support, both in kind and in their hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Don. We'll now continue with our confession forgiveness this day. In the name of the Holy Trinity, amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you. <clears throat> Forgive us, renew us, lead us in your will and walk in your ways. Amen. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are adopted into the household of Christ, inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. I invite those able, please rise.
the grace of our Lord Christ Jesus, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We're transitioning right now to this is the feast. <clears throat> This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood sent free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory. victory for our God. Alleluia. We pray, God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the psalm which we read responsibly this day. The reading today is Psalm 119, verses 33 through 40. Please read this responsively. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teaching. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the, repro the reproach that I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. By your righteousness, enliven me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Our reading today is from the Old Testament book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 8. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Word of God, word of life. Please be seated. Go. <clears throat> I invite the children to join me up front if they would like to. <clears throat> I promise I won't keep you up here very long. Here, you don't even have to sit close to me today. You can sit by her. She's not so bad. I know you like her because you told me at the Nurse Village. Good morning. <clears throat> Is anybody here ever afraid of anything? Have you been? Okay, can you tell me? Just go ahead. If, you, if you'd like to, you can share something you're afraid of. A red haunted house. Oh, there you go. Oh, my daddy tickles me. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, I can relate to that. Anybody else? <clears throat> That's okay. How about anybody out there? Has anybody ever been afraid? If you have, please raise your hand for the children. Okay, some of you have never been afraid. Well, this is going to be a long day for you, I'm afraid. Hope you know the pun there. <clears throat> we all have a fear. When I was really, really young, I used to be afraid when it got very, very dark and I couldn't see any of the stars and I could barely see, you know, in front of my hand. It used to scare me because I never knew what was out there. What, what if I tripped over something? What if I fell into a well? And we didn't have a dog named Lassie, so I knew they would never get me out of the well. It can be very frightening in life, but God reminds us that we should not be afraid because God is always with us. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, being like a tree and being very solidly rooted. You know, trees have very little fear in them, you know, because they've got nice deep roots. And we're going to talk about this today. But I want to talk about, real quick, my apple tree. I was afraid when we first moved into our house, uh, gosh, that's been about three years ago now, yeah, three years ago this month, that I was afraid that the apple tree that we had in the backyard would not bear fruit, because that fall, there was nothing. And then the next year, do you know what happened? See how little these apples, okay? Our apples weren't much bigger than that. They fell, they fell down, and they're all mushy and icky, and I thought, well, I'm afraid this tree is just not going to bear fruit. And then last year, it bore lots of fruit. And then even this year, it was very droughty. Did you notice it got really dry around here for a while? We still had apples. Now, they weren't very big, but... I was afraid, well, you know, this tree bears fruit, but it's kind of going to waste at those times. And then I realized I shouldn't be afraid for the tree because God was taking care of things. And God was using the tree to make sure that some of the animals that I'm always afraid won't have enough food had plenty of food. The squirrels had plenty of food. I will see them occasionally out there just gnawing away on the apples, although the apples are basically gone by this point. But this fall, I've been watching. Some of the birds were at it. And some bigger animals were also in the yard. The deer. I found out that deer love apples. Did you know that? I knew they liked them, but they love them. They were all over our yard, as many apples as there were deer. And I realized that there's nothing to be afraid of, whether it's for a tree, because God takes care of it with the deer and the other animals, 
eating the things and the seeds go other places, the tree gets rejuvenated, as well as I really don't have to be afraid of things in life. You know, whether it's the dark or scary things, because no matter what, God will be there and will help me to be, see like this tree, rooted firmly, not just in, in our faith, but rooted, fir rooted firmly in not having to be so afraid. So I thought, should we help people not be afraid this morning? Let's help them through prayer, because that's another way to not be afraid if we pray to God. So let's go ahead. We'll do a repeat after me pray prayer. God of the universe. Sometimes we are afraid. When we get scared. When we get anxious. Please remind us. You are always there. Taking care of us. Every step of the way. So that we don't have to be afraid. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you very much. I'll let you go back down. If you haven't guessed by now, we're going to talk about fear and anxiety. Because it's right there in our reading today. Fear and anxiety are powerful motivators, but not in a good way. If you doubt it, I invite you to just look around today. The moment you leave here, you'll be bombarded with messages of fear and anxiety. It's all over our society. It's in our politics. It's in our workplaces. It's on TV, constantly reminding us what you need to be afraid of and what you need to prepare for and how to make sure it's going to be all okay. But the lesson got me to thinking because it is a stewardship lesson. What are you afraid of? I want you to just take a brief moment the second service, so you should feel off the hook. We're going to do interactive with people. But just for a moment, think about something that you are afraid of. Now think of something that makes you anxious. Now, why are you afraid of that thing or person or whatever it is? And why is it that that something or someone makes you anxious? I'm sure there are all sorts of reasons out there. Fear and anxiety are part of our existence. I mean, think about it. Who among us does not have at least a modicum of fear of the unknown? Or what about fearing the new indifferent? I mean, I don't know about you, but don't you have a comfortable routine in your life, or at least part of your life? Isn't something pretty you know, stable routine, day to day? Well, what happens if that were to change? What about your life becomes very different? What if something very new and unexpected happens in your life? There's a lot of fear and anxiety that's wrapped up in that. And in the midst of our fear and anxiety, we have the words of one of the great prophets, Jeremiah. Reminding us, just like last week, we talked about Psalm 1, about being a tree firmly planted. Again, in Jeremiah 17, a tree firmly planted. Planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. That is an image to dispel fear and anxiety. An image to remind us to not be afraid, to not be anxious. But it's easier said than done. In healthy congregations, a systems approach by Peter Steinke, the late Reverend Dr. Peter Steinke, I first really grappled with how family systems from learning about it at seminary truly connected in a congregation, in a faith family. 
It was a long time ago, over 20 years ago now, when the Reverend Dr. Peter Sankey gathered some pastors in the Rocky Mountain Synod and led us through kind of a pilot program to how can we understand family systems when it comes to a faith family. Now, if you're a social worker, you know family systems really well. But he was focusing on this very phrase to help us as leaders and to try to impart that to all members of our congregations. And it's something that I've worked on over the years. When I first came here in 2019, we began to work on that. And of course, COVID happened and fears and anxiety rose exponentially. But basically, it works like this. Be a non-anxious presence. Even when others are caught up in anxiety. Now that sounds very straightforward, and it is. But this was the other part that I struggled with for years because he said, to not be anxious, right? He says, if you can model that 20% of the time and not get caught up in other people's anxiety, you're doing well. And I thought, well, that seems like a pretty low bar, doesn't it? I mean, 20% of the time? I mean, you're saying that 80% of the time we as human beings are going to be anxious? Well, I was wrong, and he was right. No, it is a reasonable bar. Why? Because we live as human beings in a world that bombards us with things that will bring up fear and anxiety. Even those that we think, oh, they are the most calm among us or out in society. If you ask them to truly admit, they have their own fears and anxieties. It may be on a personal, communal, or global scale. But be a non-anxious presence. Even when others are caught up in anxiety, it was all biblically based. It was based on these lessons from last week, this week, and the ones we'll have in the coming weeks. It was based on Jesus and the gospel. And simply put, today, that tree planted by the water shall not fear when things happen that would cause fear. For a tree, right, when heat comes, and as we just recently experienced here in southern Minnesota, extreme drought comes. Its leaves shall stay green. I can attest to that from my trees in my backyard. Even those that were struggling in the year of drought, it is not anxious. Now, I cannot talk to my trees, and maybe you can talk to yours and tell me about it later because I'd like to know how you do it. But basically, all I could see is they did not seem to be anxious because they have survived the drought. And as we learned last week, as trees will help each other in their underground root systems, they seem to help each other out. So to not be anxious, to not fear, it's not just suggest in the Bible, it's a promise in the Bible for all of us today. It's a promise that those trees shall not cease to bear fruit. You know, the fruits of the Spirit, God's love, forgiveness. I think by now most of us know the list. We've heard it in church more than once. But when I was thinking, well, how does this work, you know? Another shameless plug for his great book, How Your 21st Century Church Family Works, I thought, well, where's the proof of that? And I thought, what better proof than in our pyramids? And what you see on the screen, there's a close-up of the pyramids. This is a symbol of a faith family that bears fruit and does not cease to bear fruit for 70 years. It's been 70 years since this congregation most of us were not a part of that 
but we still have some that were there. Gathered. They gathered without anxiety because there was no church building per se. They met in the theater. There was no promise except God's promise. And 70 years later, their work has borne fruit. We don't just see it in our building, but we see it in our faith family. Our Savior's Lutheran Church is this tree with strong roots and has been for 70 years. So when I read this text in the Old Testament, it's not only for me and for you, it's for us as a faith family. It's for us as those strong trees rooted in God's word, rooted in the promise that shall see years of drought, that shall see years of heat, to see all kinds of things that will try to bring on our fear and anxiety. But through it all, we have become a non-anxious presence. And yes, perhaps only 20% of the time throughout all those years. But I have to tell you, that's a whole lot better than zero. And that 20%, or maybe if it's even a little higher, I would hope and pray, it has borne fruit. Because here we are. And I believe 70 years from now, when I'm gone, and when some of you are gone from here, it will still bear fruit. Because I believe it hasn't ceased bearing fruit now, and it won't. And I believe that because of these comforting, promising words that begin in you and me in our hearts. You have the promise. You are the tree that has been planted by water. Your roots go out strong into God's word, soaking it up, soaking up God's promises. And we shall not fear, no matter what. And I believe we will not cease to bear fruit. That is gospel good news. Let us pray. Eternal God, in your loving wisdom, you set us beside the fountain of life, like a tree planted by running streams. Fill us with delight in your teaching. Take fear and anxiety out of our hearts so that we may bear fruit in every season of life. Through Christ Jesus, our Messiah, Savior, and Lord. Amen.
remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Give us courage to not be afraid, to not be anxious. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact the environment. Summon us to be advocates for healthy waterways, habitats, and air. Merciful God. Lead us in justice as we pray for those in government, the military, and other positions of authority. Give them humble and willing hearts, looking to the needs of others. We pray also for our enemies. Merciful God. Trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way, especially those we name in our hearts this day. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence, merciful God. Teach us your paths as we pray for this congregation to be a non-anxious presence for one another, for this community, and for the world. Be at work in us and unite us in your love as we labor together for the sake of the gospel. Merciful God. Teach us and lead us in your commandments. Nourish us through your words so that we can extend the roots of your gospel, good news, everywhere. Merciful God. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these in the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share God's peace with one another. We worship God with our offering. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, be the bread of peace. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. 
Before we prepare the table, I will just make mention, as you know, Lou has been trying some different things and baking for us. And if you were here at dinner church, we're trying communion wafers. Now, this is my own personal aside, and whether you agree with me, it's fine or not, but I think they are so much better than the typical communion wafers that stick to your mouth and taste nothing like any communion I had either in Jerusalem or Bethlehem. So, But again, please let us know after worship as we're trying and experimenting, and thank you again to Lou. Now, people of God, people of light, we gather as a holy communion, a faith family, for a meal that has been shared countless times in countless places and in countless ways. The first time this meal was shared, Jesus was gathered around a table with a ragged collection of people, outcasts, betrayers, the power-hungry, the fragile, lonely, lost. The first time this meal was celebrated, Jesus promised this was for all time. That whenever this bread was broken and the wine poured, wherever the story was told around a table, he would be there. Today, we remember the story as it's been told a thousand times over. We eat the bread and drink the wine. And we affirm that we all belong at this table and that Jesus is here. And we have no fear. So, if we come to this table angry... Let this bread and wine be our peace. If we come to this table broken, let this bread and wine be our grace. If we come to this table betrayed, let this bread and wine be our wholeness. If we come to this table in despair, let this bread and wine be our life. Forgive us, O oh God, and draw us close to you. Forgive us, O oh God, and draw us close to you. For this is a holy table with food to fill the hungry world and wine to quench thirsty hearts. Thanks be to God. When Jesus ate with his friends, he took bread and after blessing he broke it and gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Then he took the cup and after giving thanks, passed it to his friends saying, Drink. This cup poured out for you and for all people is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break bread and share the one cup. Thanks be to God. And we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus has always been one to invite. Friends, you are invited to this table. Each and every one of us with our doubts, our fears, our scars, our joy, our dreams, our hopes, our questions. We are invited to God's table. Here we will be met and we will be fed. Here we are given a taste of an expansive life that is full to the brim with love, overflowing with joy. Come, not because you must, but because you can. You are invited. This table is for you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God and... All are welcome.
Blessed be your name, God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The God of glory, Christ Jesus, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever, amen. I invite those who are able, please rise. Go in peace. May you prosper in God's world. Thanks be to God.